Hi, I'm Steve Lascazzo, and this is The Way. Welcome to the January 2024 This is The Way podcast, Star Wars News Update. The Mandalorian and Grogu movie is coming. I'm pretty sure if you're a fan, you've probably already heard. But Star Wars and Lucasfilm announced on January 9th that a movie will go into production this year featuring Din Djarin and Grogu. That's right. Not a season four of The Mandalorian. A movie. John Favreau will direct and Favs Filoni and Kathleen Kennedy will executive produce. Now, no mention of Rick Famuyiwa, who joined the executive producing team for the Favreau-led show during season three on Disney+. Plus. There's no mention of a writer yet. I think we can assume it will be Favreau, considering how all the credits of the show have been trending. And this is not Filoni's movie being handed to Favreau. That movie that's supposed to tie in the Mandoverse or whatever, that, that's a separate thing. Now, I'm starting to have a lot of questions. Will it be light on Rebels cameos because there's this other movie that might be coming? Will we revisit characters or locales from just the show? Or will it tie into Return of the Jedi characters? Planets? Storylines that were only mentioned in passing in the original trilogy? How deep will Favreau go? Now, again, this may not be Filoni's movie, but it may also have something to do with setting up the New Republic's fight against Thrawn that has been building in both The Mandalorian and and in the first season of the Ahsoka show. Questions? More questions? I, I mean, it could, however, be something completely different. This could be a standalone adventure. But something tells me if they're going to go to the well, they're going to come back carrying the same water we're used to drinking. There isn't a release date yet as of the recording of this podcast. But And this also doesn't mean there's not going to be another season of the show. There could still be a season four of The Mandalorian according to Deadline. But movies and shows get announced and then fall through a Lucasfilm at a surprising and alarming rate, don't they? Everything's going to be all right, kid. Star Wars Podcast Day 2024 is right around the corner, but it is time to update you on Star Wars news since the last news update podcast. The Favreau-led movie isn't the only thing announced by Disney, Lucasfilm, and StarWars.com earlier this month. Ahsoka Season 2 officially got an announcement as having a green light. Filoni drew or sketched a scene of Ahsoka and Sabine standing on the same impossibly outstretched arm and hand of the father that Balin's skull stood on in the epilogue of the Ahsoka Season 1. The question at this point is whether the hinted at Filoni movie that's supposed to tie in everything, will is that going to be the conclusion of Ahsoka's story? Since it looks like season two is going to continue the story from season one. Uh, Filoni's supposedly still planning on that movie to wrap up the Disney Plus storylines. But since we don't hear about Ahsoka in other Star Wars media after this point, like we this is the latest that we've heard about Ahsoka does this mean it, she doesn't make it out of her own show? The Ahsoka first season is the latest in the timeline that we have seen her. Rhino Ray hears her voice among the chorus of Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, but does that mean she's dead? And what does dead even mean in Star Wars anyway, right? There are many things we are going to have our eye on, including the Bad Batch. Season 3 has a release date. February 21st, we'll see three episodes available. And then I'm guessing that they're going to come out weekly. The episode titles have appeared on the internet. And there are only 15 listed instead of the previous seasons with 16. Now, I don't know how many hours that will translate to, but... If you have 15 episodes and you start with three on February 21st, that works out to the finale streaming on May 1st, which is the week 
of May the 4th. It'll have been three years, three at or three seasons, three years, and 47 episodes, if you have 15, since the May the 4th, 2021 de- debut of the show. 47 episodes, and A New Hope debuted 47 years ago. Nice little harmony in that. Uh, echoes, I think George Lucas said. Or, no, uh, it, rhyme, it rhymes. That's what he said. Here are those episode titles. So, February 21st, you'll see Confined, Paths Unknown, and Shadows of Tantis. Then the next week will be A Different Approach. The Return, Infiltration, Extraction, Bad Territory, and then we're going to be into the second half of the season with The Harbinger, Identity Crisis, Point of No Return, Juggernaut, Into the Breach, Flash Strike, and the finale the Cavalry Has Arrived. That is Wrecker's line from the Season 7 episode of The Clone Wars. I think that's the first time that we really see Clone Force 99. So I wonder, does that finale title hint at more heartbreak for people who love the characters of Clone Force 99? The Cavalry Has Arrived! As a matter of housekeeping, remember, I don't have Disney Plus right now, but I will... Towards the end, maybe, I don't know, I I might just subscribe for a month and binge watch most of the episodes, you know, all at the same time. And that way I can do a first half of the season and then a second half in about the same time. People are going to either be watching the show or not watching the show. But I've never done an episode by episode for The Bad Batch or animated shows anyways. Uh, I did, that's not true, I did do kind of an episode by episode for Star Wars Vision Season 1. I did not for Season 2. But without having a subscription to Disney+, Plus, I don't really see any reason to continue to do a weekly show for The Bad Batch. Uh, I think everyone will, will, will be fine. If I continue to do the first half, second half of the of the season and just release those pretty closely to each other since I'll only have the you know the the, the subscription for a month or ma- at two at max because there's really no reason I, i'll I'll get it around May the fourth or or you know around the end of the the series and then I'll have it for a short time and that'll be fine. Uh, there's no new content coming out other than the Bad Batch here early. Uh, And when we hear of the other shows, like the Acolyte and Skeleton Crew, when those will debut, I'll make decisions when those are presented. (laughs) Moving on to Star Wars Gamers News. If card gaming is your thing, there's something coming in February that might interest you. StarWarsNews.net describes this game as a cooperative card game, Star Wars Timeline Twist. Zygomatic is producing it as a subsidiary of Asmodee Games, and there's a game called Timeline Twist where you get a random assortment of cards with historic events, real-life historic events, and then you have to put those in chronological order and make strategic discards and stuff like that. It sounds like this game will do the same for events, but with the Star Wars universe and the Star Wars Timeline. And the Asmodee store lists the release date for this game as February 16th. We can wait. Collectors. Hasbro has more vintage collection and Black Series products available. I'll start with the pre-orders for the vintage collection Luke Skywalker X-Wing A New Hope Pilot Edition. Three and three quarter or nine and a half centimeter New Hope Pilot Luke with the orange jumpsuit. The accessories look to be... The Red 5 Helmet and a Blaster Pistol, and that'll go for around $17 US. It's available for pre-order, and it will ship around August of this year. Might be a nice little addition. Luke Skywalker, X-Wing Pilot, it's a a good character to have. You think? Next, I'll mention the Vintage Collection Clone Commander Rex Braca Mission. 
also shipping in August and available for pre-order now. That's when Rex took the Bad Batch to get their inhibitor chips removed in the Bad Batch Season 1. His armor has tally marks on it, and it comes with removable helmet and two blaster pistols, also for $17. More vintage collection items, a Mandalorian Minds of Mandalore edition, and a separate Grogu figure. So you have to pay $16.99 for each of them, not for both of them in the same thing. Both from Season 3, both available for pre-order, and both with July 2024 shipping windows. The Mando is a three and three quarter inch with a blaster, knife, and an ignited dart saber. Grogu is not three and three quarter inches, but he is three and three quarter inch scale. So he's going to be much smaller. And the little green guy comes with four accessories. But from the package, it looks like it comes with a male shirt, but not one that he can wear. It's just like a prop. And then he's got his pram on a clear plastic stand, so it looks like the pram is floating. But then there are pieces where it can look like the pram is closed, completely open, or partially open. So you get the character, the shirt, and then the other three accessories are ways to show the pram in three different states. So you can't use all those accessories at the same time. But it's only $17, granted... You're getting less plastic because Grogu is so small. Two more Mandalorian Season 3 characters also shipping in July. And they're still available for pre-order. Axe Woves and a Mandalorian Fleet Commander. Woves comes with a jetpack, blaster pistol accessory, and the way the website lists it, it's not a helmet. They call it an interchangeable helmet head. That's for $17 with X woes. And then the unnamed Mandalorian Fleet Commander has only two accessories, the interchangeable helmet head and a blaster pistol. That is also $17. Now, this is one of those characters. I don't know how old you are. I'm in my 40s. I'm as old as Star Wars. Let's put it that way. Back in the mid-80s, this is one of those characters that ends up in the clearance bin at Sears or JC's, JC Penney's, it's really cheap because nobody wants it because it's an unnamed character. So every kid ends up having one because their parent gets it. Oh, well, this was like $2, so of course I was going to pick it up. But now, if you have to pay regular price and you need to pre-order this thing, I don't think this is going to be a hot ticket item. So less people have it means it's more rare. They're not made to order, though, right? I'm sure that's not how it's done. So, I wouldn't count on this being a high-priced collectible. But still, if you got to choose between Rex and an unnamed character that I don't even know if you can picture him as I mention him, who are you going to spend your money on, right? So, do you take the gamble and, and buy this character, counting on it being so rare in the future... And you just pack this one away and you say, oh, I've got an un, you know, an untouched version of this unnamed character. Maybe this guy goes on to be somebody special. And, oh, I'm so glad I got it. It even lists him as unnamed. And then in the future, 10 years down the line, it turns out he's somebody special. I, you got to make that decision for yourself. That's also $16.99 and available for pre-order. Very well. Now we bump up into price. $24.99 USD for Attack of the Clones Django Fett. Seven accessories pre-order for a late June shipping date this year. You get his dual pistols and a jetpack. And then you get flame accessories too. Two for the jetpack. And then one for a flamethrower. And the last accessory. Well, I'm not sure if it's a helmet. Or one of those interchangeable helmet heads. So, if you have a Mace Windu, <laughs> you could stage the uh, Geonosis arena scene. There are two 6-inch Black Series Edition characters that are also twenty four ninety nine USD. First, the Ahsoka Series 
Lars Mikkelsen modeled Grand Admiral Thrawn. There's just one accessory, a blaster pistol. It's available for pre-order, but if you look at the Hasbro Pulse site, it doesn't ship until January of 2025. You can get a Phase 1 Clone Trooper much sooner for that same price. Six-inch figure modeled on Tamara Morrison's portrayal of Jango Fett and the Clone Troopers as they appear in the Attack of the Clones. So Phase 1, it's a stark white trooper uh, outfit That's before any of the clones showed any signs of individuality. So you can call this figure whoever you want. (laughs) I mean, you could call it Rex. You can call it any of them. I guess just not the Bad Batch, I suppose. It comes with a removable helmet, not a helmet interchangeable head, and two blasters, and that ships in June of this year. Then we get another price jump. Black Series 6-inch The Phantom Menace Edition, Droidica. I read the site. It says, Movie Accurate Deco. It looks good. And then, first of its kind, Unique Droid Form Factor. You can pose it standing as it would on the legs. And then, you know, when the shield is up, there's no shield or clear plastic thing. You're going to have to handle it yourself. So you can pose it as it's standing firing or... You can kind of like uh, transformer it down to a globe rolling form. Thirty three ninety nine USD ships in July. Now, I checked the site. It doesn't show it completely folded into a globe. That's intentional, I think. I don't think it gets into a little ball. I, I don't think it can roll like the Droidicas. I think that's a mistake. I think they should have made it so that it could completely roll into a ball. It doesn't have to be a solid ball, but I think they should have made it so that you could roll it around the floor. I mean, unless you're an adult and you're not actually even going to take it out of the box, right? I mean, but if you want your kid to play with a droid because you got to make it roll, right? Spend that extra money in in, uh, product development and get that thing to transform down into a ball, Hasbro. Come on. Even though it doesn't, I mean, I checked the website out. I I still think I got to get this. This is demanded by the gods, it is. The biggest price, though, listed for new listed Star Wars items on the Hasbro Pulse website is $50. But it's a two-character, two-package, nine-accessory set from the Ahsoka series. No, sorry. It's from the Rebels series, actually. It's a vintage collection chopper and sabine wren and they ship in october it says pre-order until february 14th so valentine's day i don't really know for sure what that means when it says pre-order by february 14th so i think the characters will still be available but maybe you know the shipping it's not shipping until october but a pre-order ends in february So I still think you could pre-order it if they were still available. But I think, you you know, act fast if you want to have them for sure. I I mean, absolutely. And you probably need to get that order in. But since the site shows these in different packages, maybe it's just the bundle that is going away and not the characters. Maybe then you will have to purchase them separately. Right now it's $50 for the two-character and two packages. Chopper's got an interchangeable radar dish, and then two Lothcats as his accessories, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But I guess you don't just you don't want you if you want to make them twenty four ninety nine, you got to give people something else, right? Sabine has an interchangeable helmet head, helmet head, not a helmet. Jetpack with optional flame accessory, energy shield for the wrist, and then two blaster pistols. And again, these are Rebels versions. She doesn't have Ezra's lightsaber yet. And again, $50 if you can afford it. But they won't get to you until the fall. Just one more thing. This is when we talk Disney Parks news. It's not really news. I mean, it's been out for a couple months, I guess. But I went looking for something to put here in this podcast episode. And I saw a mention about the season of The Force 
that is supposedly returning to Disneyland for the first time since 2015. Never been to Disneyland, so I can't tell you for sure. But it says April 5th through June 2nd of this year, the park will... It's, it's kind of like an extension of the Disneyland After Dark Star Wars Nights. I've seen parts of uh, when Disneyland does something for Star Wars on May the 4th. And it kind of looks like it's just kind of an extension that grew out of the popularity of so few events. So the After Dark Star Wars Nights are supposedly April 16th, 18th, 23rd, 25th, 30th, and then May 2nd, 7th, and 9th. I assume that means that the Saturday, May the 4th thing is its own thing. It's probably both the best and the worst day to try to visit the park, if you ask me. But I'm I'm not 100% sure. Again, I'm from Disney World, the Disney World area. But I imagine that this season of the Force thing is kind of like Epcot Food and Wine or the Garden Festivals, if you are familiar with that. And if you're a Floridian and you've been to the park... You, you know what I'm talking about. So I think this season of the Force is kind of like Disneyland's version of a Star Wars event. So it's coming between in April through June. And during the event in Disneyland, there are things like there's a hyperspace mountain overlay that we don't get because the Magic Kingdom doesn't do... That's not where Galaxy's Edge is, right? It's at Hollywood Studios. But there'll be special foods available... And from time to time, if you go to Galaxy's Edge in Hollywood Studios, there are foods and sometimes there are special ones. But I also think that this will, there'll be rare characters walking around at Disneyland's Batu. And there's going to be the new Star Tours scenes that we previously announced were coming, the the ones that are going to come from Ahsoka. And apparently in Disneyland, there's also going to be some Star Wars themed fireworks remember disney doesn't like to like non-theme thing like like they're gonna have to find an in-universe way to make these fireworks appropriate but i think they're going to do that which is a first from what i've been reading now i also don't know do those fireworks only come when it's the after dark event during the season of the force remember it runs april 5th through june 2nd the season of the force but the After Dark Nights, there's only five in April, 16, 18, 23, 25, and 30. That's five. And then May the 2nd, 7th, and 9th. And then maybe the May the 4th, maybe they just didn't mention it. Or maybe, that, like I said, it's its own thing. But if you're planning on going and you live in that area or you're making a trip out there, make sure you check. Don't just take my word for it. Because those After Dark Days... Those are special ticketed events. That means, and if you're from Florida, it means you have to buy an extra ticket. Like if you're going to the Halloween or Christmas after hour stuff at Magic Kingdom. I think we can let him off with the warning this time. Okay. If you think I've missed something or disagree with me, send an email. This is the way podcast at gmail.com. Our next podcast episode is probably going to be Star Wars Podcast Day 2024. It's the 25th anniversary of Star Wars podcasting. Not podcasting in general or Star Wars Podcast Day. It's the 25th anniversary of, I think, Jedi Talk was the first Star Wars dedicated podcast. And that was when the first episode. So February 7th is going to be the fourth hashtag SWPD and our fourth year of participating. How else can you interact with me and this show? All our links can be found in one place. L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash this is the way pod. Again, this is the way podcast at gmail.com. Best way to contact me. It's the most sure way that I will see what you write. You can contact me through Facebook, through X, Twitter, uh, Instagram. You can. But it's less likely that I check those. I check my the, the, the Gmail much more option, often than I check those other things. Thank you so much for joining me. Your host, Steve Scalza, for This is the Way Podcast's January 
2024 Star Wars News Update Podcast. Until next time, I'm Steve Lascazzo. May the Force be with you always. Always.